The Pulitzer Prize-winning investigative journalist Seymour Hersh is back in the news this week with another explosive article that is ruffling some feathers at the White House. During the Bush administration years, Hersh was widely criticized by White House officials for his exposés on the torture at Abu Ghraib, secret U.S. operations overseas, and U.S. policy in Iran. Now it is the Obama White House upset with an article from Hersh. Earlier this week, The New Yorker magazine published his latest investigation titled Iran and the Bomb, How Real is the Threat? Hirsch writes, quote, There is a large body of evidence, however, including some of America's most highly classified intelligence assessments, suggesting that the United States could be in danger of repeating a mistake similar to the one made with Saddam Hussein's Iraq eight years ago, allowing anxieties about the policies of a tyrannical regime to distort our estimations of the state's military capacities and intentions. Seymour Hersh reveals that despite using Iranian informants and cutting-edge surveillance technology, U.S. officials have been unable to find decisive evidence that Iran has been moving enriched uranium to an underground weapon-making center. Hersh quotes Mohammed al-Baradai, the former head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, saying he has not seen, quote, a shred of evidence that Iran was, has been, was been weaponizing in terms of building nuclear weapons facilities and using enriched materials. The Obama White House, meanwhile, is repeating repeatedly cited Iran's nuclear program as a threat to the world. President Obama raised the issue last month during his speech before AIPAC, the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee. So let me be absolutely clear. We remain committed to preventing Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons. Its illicit nuclear program is just one challenge that Iran poses. As I said on Thursday, the Iranian government has shown its hypocrisy by claiming to support the rights of protesters while treating its own people with brutality. Joining us now in Washington is Seymour Hirsch, investigative reporter at The New Yorker and author of many books, including Chain of Command, The Road from 9-11 to Abu Ghraib, currently working on a book looking at the Dick Cheney vice presidency. Welcome to Democracy Now! Seymour Hirsch, lay out what you have found. Well, very simply, it's, it's uh, you know, you could argue it's 2003 all over again. Remember WMD, mushroom clouds. Um, there's just no serious evidence inside uh, that Iran is actually doing anything to make a nuclear weapon. You know, making a weapon is a big deal. You have to have fabrication facilities. You have to convert a very toxic gas into a, uh, into a, in, in, into a metal and then fold, mold it into a core. It's big stuff, and there's no sign of any, any but we've been looking... Uh, Cheney was convinced, uh, uh, Dick Cheney, the former vice president, that there was a secret facility uh, a la uh, what we probably saw in the uh, movie Bananas. Remember Woody Allen's movie, The Little Mowats Running Underground? He was convinced that there was an underground facility somewhere. And we had uh, special forces units in there since 04, really, perhaps as late as um, uh, uh, early as 05, maybe. Uh, looking, we've been paying off people, the Kurds, the Azeris, the opposition groups. We've been giving a lot of money to uh, various defectors. Uh, we've been looking with satellites for uh, uh, telltale signs, air holes, air vents, uh, somewhere in the desert or in the, somewhere in, in an arid area. And we found nothing. Uh, not for lack of trying, we looked very hard. And there's just no evidence on the inside. And it's not only here, it's known in Europe. Uh, I had, it's a much easier uh, situation, at least for a journalist, to go to Europe because the European intelligence officials are much more open about it. Yes, we were very skeptical, they will say, but we found nothing. So. The fact is we have a, 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 the evidence is pretty strong, I mean very strong, that we have a sanctions program that's designed to prevent uh, the Iranians from building a weapon systems they're not building. Uh, and Cy Hirsch, your article details some uh, extraordinary uh, uh, efforts by the United States. You talk about uh, the special forces uh, operations actually replacing street signs in Tehran with, uh, uh, with radiation detectors and replacing bricks in buildings. Could you talk about some of that? I mean, because that, that's enormous risk that they're taking uh, actually going into the country and doing that. Oh, it's amazingly complicated. And I will tell you, obviously, I hate to write about operational stuff, but uh, let me just say that whatever we were doing, we, we have a, a new generation now that's more sophisticated. But in those early days, uh, early days being 05, 2005, 2006, uh, it was, there was a tremendous concern that various buildings, laboratories and academic buildings in, in the city of Tehran 
were being used as secret facilities to enrich uranium to a high degree. Right now, the Iranians are absolutely within the law. That, that, that turns out they're signatories to the uh, NPT, Non-Proliferation Treaty, and there's no evidence whatsoever that uh, the IAEA, that the group that El, Mr. El Barati headed, International Atomic Energy Agency, which monitors uh, nuclear developments, um, they consistently report that there's no evidence of any diversion of any uh, uh, any of the enriched materials they now have. We're enriching, the Iranians are enriching to about 3.7 or so percent to run civilian uh, uh, power plants. Not There's one small pilot project for medical research that gets up to 20 percent. But everything that's being enriched is under camera, under watch uh, by the IAEA. There's just no sign of any uh, diversion. There's just no evidence. This doesn't mean uh, we can go to intent. It doesn't mean that there's a lot of concern in the United States, an appropriate concern about the Iranian intent. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't watch what they do. Um, but it does mean that we're sort of beating a dead horse here. Talk about your sources, Cy Hirsch. <laughs> Thanks a lot, <laughs> Amy. <laughs> Look, um, there's been two very secret studies done. Um, called uh, National Intelligence Estimates, NIEs. And these are the most sort of uh, sacrosanct internal uh, studies done by the community. Almost all the time they're private. There are studies going on, NIEs going on all the time. The situation now in Ecuador, for example, uh, other issues. Venezuela's always looked at. The situation in the war. Uh, uh, war peace stuff is constantly being looked at by groups of people in the intelligence community. And these documents are promulgated without anybody knowing it. In, for some reason, in 2007, there was an NIE put out about, uh, about the Iranian nuclear weapons program, and the White House wanted a summary made. And I think at that point, 16 intelligence agencies were involved in the final conclusions. And internally, the guys running it, to their credit, voted 16 to nothing to say what they said, which is that in a summary put out on, about the NIE, as I say, unprecedented summary, saying there's no evidence they'd, they'd done any weaponization since 2003. And um, there is a new study that was just done. Uh, it was published in February of this year. And it, um, it's ha it, it, we knew about it, but nobody's actually, uh, you're getting me in a tricky area. But I, I can just say people that have worked on the, on the study and have read the study uh, um, uh, will attest, have attested that it doesn't take us any further. There's no further evidence of any weaponization. And what's even more important that I write is that this, the latest study, uh, was actually supposed to be promulgated, as the word they use in the community, last fall. And it was delayed because the Defense Intelligence Agency, the Pentagon Intelligence Agency, uh, had an assessment that was uh, knocked everybody's socks off. Their assessment was the only reason Iran even looked at weaponization, and we're not talking about building anything, we're talking about doing studies, paper studies, was because they were frightened of Iraq. They'd had an eight-year war, as many in your audience will remember, between 1980 and 1988 with Iraq, a terrible, brutal war. And when they, the worry was that in the early, uh, in the 2001, 2002 period, that if Iraq went nuclear, uh, they might need some deterrent. So what they even looked at, the papers they did, was aimed not at us or the Israelis, but aimed at the Iraqis. That didn't get into the final judgment, but it affected the debate in a pretty positive way. And, and Cy Hirsch, well, one of the things you say in your article is that the these uh, latest intelligence assessments, that a lot of the career intelligence people in the government now have uh, pushed back a lot more against political pressure uh, after the debacle with, uh, uh, with Iraq and the uh, pressure on the intelligence community to skew uh, intelligence assessments about uh, weapons of mass destruction, that now the career people are a lot more or willing to buck any political pressure? You know, it really depends on who's running the agency. The Defense Department, the DIA, Defense Intelligence Agency, has a career general uh, named Burgess who's been in a lot of uh, tough places. He's, you know, he, he was in this Joint Special Operations Command, and he really has, um, uh, all I can say is, uh, again, I'm getting an, uh, the people who work for him will tell you that they're no longer afraid to go up against uh, uh, the established judgment. And so what we really have happening in an amazing way, and I have to say this about the American government because uh, I, I'm always very critical, but we do have an enormous number of people in the, in the government and the intelligence community who don't take, uh, who take an oath of office to the Constitution and not to the general who's in charge of them or to the president. And we're seeing more and more of that kind of attitude coming out inside. 
Um, uh, I, I, I can't tell you why, but uh, there's more people really uh, there's a lot more concern about where we are in the world right now. Uh, uh, in the last the last decade has been a pretty horrible one for the United States, and I think the future is very, very sort of frightening too, in terms of what's been going on in the Middle East, et cetera. So there's more integrity in the process. It doesn't mean the White House likes it. So I wanted to ask you about the new International Atomic Energy Agency report that came out Tuesday, just after your article was published. This is what the New York Times reported: "Quote." The world's global nuclear inspection agency, frustrated by Iran's refusal to answer questions, revealed for the first time Tuesday that it possesses evidence that Tehran has conducted work on a highly sophisticated nuclear triggering technology that experts said could be used for only one purpose, setting off a nuclear weapon. The nine-page report raised questions about whether Iran has sought to investigate seven different kinds of technology, ranging from atomic triggers and detonators to uranium fuel, The New York Times reporting on the IAEA report. Your response, Seymour Hirsch. Well, the word evidence was not in what the IAEA said. What the IAE said is something it's been saying repeatedly, even under El Barati. And I must say, the new, the new director general, uh, uh, Mr. Amano, is, I think, um, uh, more, more willing to please us than El Barade was, just in terms of uh, speculating more. Uh, it, there was nothing new in that report. They've been saying repeatedly um, that they, ha they have concerns about certain information they have. Uh, they don't describe it as evidence. The, uh, the, the new trigger is a very complicated device that was used by us uh, maybe 30 years ago to trigger a uh, hydrogen, a fusion weapon, and uh, it went nowhere. Uh, and it's, a, as I say, extremely uh, complicated device that uh, there's no evidence that anybody in their right mind would want to use that kind of a trigger. It would involve creating a different kind of reactor. The, the, the technical problems with that kind of a, a, a complicated device are enormous. And anyway, um, are you really going to be uh, are you going to make a trigger before you know what kind of gun you have i mean you're just it's just it's just it was um, uh the word evidence was nowhere in the report it's it's been going on a long time and um what's been going on is the iaea has put out this is even under el barati for about six seven eight years now they put out report after report that say one thing that's the most important thing no evidence of any diversion of enriched materials no evidence that they're squirreling away uh, enriched uranium to make a secret bomb they have a lot of uh, uranium enriched the 3.7 percent yes uh, but there's no evidence they're doing anything more than storing it up to run a civilian nuclear reactor. They have two in the, make, in the process now. They're having a lot of technical troubles, but eventually they're going to need that fuel. It takes an enormous amount of fuel to drive a reactor. And so um, it's the same thing that's been going on. You, could look, you can look at the questions raised and lead your story with that, or you can look at the fact they say consistently that there's been no diversion. There are outstanding questions. The Iranians don't like being asked a lot of questions about uh, third-party information. But they keep on coming back to the IAEA and saying, um, give us some reason to answer a question. We're not going to answer questions about third-party gossip, but most of which they believe comes from fabrications. And there's been some evidence that some of the material, particularly there's a famous laptop incident, where the, there was material given to us, the providence of which wasn't known, that we made a big fuss about, allegedly a, a, a laptop belonging to an Iranian scientist, nuclear scientist. There were very crude drawings in it. They weren't, they weren't at all at near the level of anything serious. And that, for years back, about four or five years ago, fueled all sorts of debate. There's just uh, the word evidence, I'll just say again, the word evidence was not in what the IAEA said. Yes, there are outstanding questions. They've been the same questions have been asked asked and answered for years, this particular trigger device was written about in a London newspaper two or three years ago, a major story. It's not new. There's nothing known about it that hasn't, hasn't been said before. Uh, uh, this is what happens, you know, alas, um, uh, uh, you know, one thing about a free press is you, you don't have to like everything you read.